Hey guys, what is up? This is Mr. Fujito here, and I'm coming at you with a new 2D Minecraft tutorial series, RPG style, I don't even remember the whole title, but uh, yeah, let's get started. So, in the last episode, we created some GUI, and uh, before that, we did block pickups, and before that, we did placing and breaking blocks, and before that, we did character controller, and before that, we got started with the whole development of this game. And here we are now. And I have happened to lose the files for the project, unfortunately. But uh, this gives us the opportunity to take what we've learned from those previous tutorials and apply it to this version of the game in a much more clean and... Uh, and uh, and I guess efficient fashion. So before we get started with this tutorial, you're going to need to do a couple of things. First of all, is you're going to want to get Unity, preferably Unity Pro, but you don't need it at all. Um, but Pro is obviously better. Um, uh, yeah, you don't need Unity Pro, but it's a good tool to have in general. Another thing you're going to need is you're going to want to go to unity3d.com, learn, and then tutorials, and check out everything in here for scripting. Uh, you at least need beginner, intermediate, uh, not so much, but uh, it's good to look at all of these. These aren't even the, that complicated videos. These here, this one's like four minutes, and this one's a pretty long one. Excuse the interruption. Um, yeah, so these, uh, this one's actually a pretty long one. Some of them are really short. This one's even a minute and a half, approximately. The uh, tutorials are in C Sharp, but you've got here the examples in JavaScript, so a lot of this stuff is very easily transferred from one language to another. Uh, yeah, so... Once you've got all that done, you can come back here. Uh, if you feel confident, you can continue on with this anyways. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is we want to create a new JavaScript called the world. Okay, this is going to store all of the data for our world generation. Okay. So I want to reformat this so it says public class world extends mono behavior. So it's better to hold everything in classes. Uh, and obviously that's the way C sharp is structured, so I mean it's better it's I I'm not exactly sure. I don't really remember because I learned this a while ago, but there is a tutorial on it and there are various reasons why it's good to structure in this form. So, uh, convert, I don't know. So now we're going to go ahead and type in function start. And function update. Okay. So upon start, we want to create a new game object. So var, var, um, uh, let's say, okay, you know what? Let's actually create a public variable here for the chunk, so var chunk, so a prefab of a chunk. Uh, and let's say chunk equals new game object chunk. And that's actually it, because it's gotta be empty. Actually, you know what, type of, actually, we're not gonna do that right now, we'll add that later when we create the chunk class, and I don't think there will be a chunk class, to be honest. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll need one. Okay, so chunk is a new game object, chunk. So if we drag this onto our main camera here, and we start the game, now we'll see that we've got a new game object here, chunk 000. It has absolutely nothing, but it's called chunk. So that's a good way to start. <coughs> okay, so now we need to create a new game object. Oh. Uh, actually, we'll say um, uh, 
Yeah. Um. Hmm. Okay. Not far. Okay, and we'll go like this, and we'll say block, and then we'll use type of. So basically, we're going to create a variable for a block, and we're going to instantiate this all over the chunk so it fills the chunk, and that becomes the chunk, and then we can start spawning more of those as we move around to create some form of infinite terrain. So type of sprite renderer, type of, um, what do we need here, box collider 2d and then type of we can also have oh we're also going to need the circle collider 2d I think that's all we need for now so for int oh no yeah for var uh, var I equals int. Okay, I gotta double check because I don't remember. I haven't done for loops in ages, and they are pretty important when doing stuff like spawning chunks. So for loops, unity, unity loops. I don't know why my window is so small here. There we go. Let's just maximize it a bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. There we go. Equals zero. When i is less than number of enemies, which is a variable that doesn't exist, i plus plus. Okay. So when i is less than sixteen. Or you know what? Let's make a let's do chunk width. Okay. And then we'll create a variable here. Chunk width equals int. And var chunk height equals int. And we'll make this a private variable, the chunk one. Okay, so for var i, chunk width i plus plus. And we'll actually make this w. Because w is kind of an abbreviation of width. So instantiate block vector two oh do we actually need to do one more thing for var <coughs> h int equals zero uh, h, sorry, is less than chunk height. H plus plus, or you want to do, m we want to do minus minus actually, because the height, it gets deeper. So instantiate block vector 2, 0, oh uh, no, uh, width height. Quaternion dot ident identity, and we're actually going to say um, block underscore instance equals instantiate, and then we're going to say block underscore instance. Um, dot wait what were we going to do with the blocks again once they're placed so it places them all yeah so we're not actually going to we're going to try this out first and we want to throw in destroy block we want to destroy the first copy of the block that was placed here. Uh, 
Yeah, that should work. Okay, yeah, so that should work. So I'm going to test this out here. Let's see if we have any errors. Okay, we do have a couple of errors here. Oh, wrong thing, sorry. Error right here. Uh, what's wrong with this? Oh, has to be an equal sign, sorry. Expecting close bracket found type of. And there also needs to be a little uh, apostrophe there. Or comma, sorry. These little mistakes can throw you off. Okay. So if we hit the pause button and we hit play, it'll load the very first frame. We've got chunk. But we have no block. Let's remove this destroy block thing. Okay, let's hit pause. Pause and play. There you go, now we've got one block in the center with everything we told it to have, but it's not instantiating anything. Oh, that's right, uh, I'm an idiot. Our chunk width and chunk height is zero, so let's go here and 16 by 16. Oh, okay, pause, play. And it'll take a bit because it's got to create uh, 64, no, even more than that. 16 times 16. It's like 128, isn't it? I think. Yeah. No, it's even more than that. I don't know. Whatever. Point is, it's creating a lot, so it's going to take a while. Or maybe it's just bugged out. It's not supposed to do anything. Oh, it's the height. We can't change this to minus, minus. Oh, we made a mistake there. Okay, Unity's gonna crash. We're gonna have to close the window. Let's call in the task manager here. Unity and task, okay. So I made a foolish mistake there. Let's open up Unity again. Luckily, we didn't have anything in the scene. All we need to do is drag our world script back onto here. 16 by 16. Pause. Play. Okay, there you go. It's got quite a bit of clones of the block. And as we can see, all of them are in their own separate places. So... If we were to actually extend the size of the box collider and this 0.5 and this to 1 and 1, which we'll have to change soon, then you'll notice that it creates a perfect 16 by 16 block of blocks, actually. So this, this first, now we can delete this first block. So let's bring that line of code back in. Destroy block. And now this should work fine. If we hit play, and there we are. So there's no original block, there's just a bunch of these clones. Okay, cool. So one thing we want to do quickly, before this for loop, we want to adjust the, the, the values in these components for the regular block so that these spawned blocks are okay as well. So, or no, uh, block dot get component box box collider 2d dot size is it I think it's size let's check it out here box collider 2d I always go to the scripting API here and I check out the the variables so yes it is size so dot size equals vector 2 1 1 and also block dot get component circle collider oh collider 2d dot radius radius equals uh, 0 0.5 oh no what not 1.5 0 0.5 and that should automatically scale everything properly 
So let's go ahead and hit play here. And now if you click on one of them, you got 1, 1, and 0 0.5, and it's perfectly square. So in that case, by selecting all of them, we'll have that perfect grid that we had before. Okay, cool. That's good. Uh, currently we have absolutely nothing being rendered. Uh, another thing that you might notice is that the chunk actually goes above the zero level. I don't know if we want that in this case. Maybe we do. That's how Minecraft was built. Zero is absolute bedrock. Let's, uh, yeah, let's build it that way. Okay. Yeah, let's build it that way. But one thing we want to do is we want to make sure the chunk's, chunk is centered. So let's go and say chunk dot transform dot position dot x equals equals uh, math f no chunk height no width width sorry width divided by two chunk dot transform dot position actually we can go ahead and do this math f dot round chunk width divided by two and that should work fine there so now it should be because half of 16 is 8 so it'll just be a regular 8 but if it was something like 15 half of 15 is 7.5 so it would automatically round to 8 because we don't want to use 0.5s for a block game so if we hit play here these will still be all in the same place obviously oh. whoops these are all in the same place starts here ends all the way up there I think it was I don't know but the chunk now starts oh it starts above 8 okay that's a problem there we need to start it at below 8 equals negative math f dot round and now it will start at below 8 negative 8 there you go okay mm -hmm. I don't think we should do this right now actually though. So let's uh, let's actually comment out this. First let's say block underscore instance dot transform dot parent equals chunk. And then we can move the chunk after that. So now if we look in here, this will probably be much cleaner. Oh, ah, yes, that's right. Chunk dot transform. Now if we move in here and we hit play. Yeah, now they're all a child of the chunk and the chunk can move them around as he wishes. Okay, now we go before, after we destroy the block or before, eh, it doesn't matter, we'll go after. We can copy this line of code or cut it and paste it. And this should work fine. Oh, wrong thing there. Here we go. There you go. We've got a chunk here. Kind of halfway through. That's good. That's good. Okay. That's very good. Hmm. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah, that's good. So that's creating the first chunk, and now we want to create some more variables here. Actually, we want to create three chunks. So after this, we're going to go instantiate chunk at chunk dot position dot transform dot uh, actually 
vector to chunk dot transform dot position dot x minus chunk width and chunk dot dot transform dot position dot y uh, and then we go quaternion dot identity okay so now we have two chunks here right next to each other good and now we need to create a third chunk quickly so this one's plus chunk width chunk dot transform dot position dot y quaternion dot identity okay I think we've been recording for about a half hour so this episode will be over fairly soon but now as you see we've got three chunks all creating one large kind of group here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create th two imaginary points in space okay with three actually one's gonna be the spawn point and then one will be here, and he one will be here. This one will be a left kind of kind of indicator. This one will be a right kind of indicator. Whoops, my bad. Let's just uh, select all these chunks again. So basically, what happens is when the player passes the left indicator, it will spawn one more chunk, and the left indicator will move down here a bit more, and the right indicator will move with it. That way, you can endlessly spawn chunks. So I say we can actually add that right now. We'll squeeze that in. That'll be pretty quick. So let's create two more variables. So private var left indicator. And I want to actually rename this from block underscore instance to block capital I instance. Because that's how I was formatting my variables from the beginning. So we'll go like that. Okay, that should be fine. Left indicator equals vector two. Which is a vector two, no open bracket, close bracket. And private var right indicator vector two. Okay, so on awake, actually yeah, and then we also need that spawn point one. So, uh, so after we spawn the very first chunk, it's the spawn point becomes chunk dot transform dot position okay so that will make the spawn point at zero 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 then then after these three are spawned we'll deal with the left and right indicators so left indicator equals oh left indicator equals spawn point minus vector two I'm sorry, hold on one moment. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay, so equals spawn point vector 2 minus, and then we'll go, uh, not, s uh, yeah, we'll go 16, 0, and then write indicator equals spawn point plus vector 2, 16, 0. Okay, and this should be fine, no errors, do we have any? Nope. Okay, so if I stop the game here, so basically this position right here is where the original chunk is spawned. So this is where the uh, spawn point will be located. And then of course the chunk is spawned in this little area here I would suppose, let's, let's say for example. Uh, and then 
uh, it's moved halfway through so it's about here now okay and this moves all the way down here as the left indicator and now when you pass this point you continue so let's see how this will look let's delete our game object here chunk 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 so let's select our chunks here let's see where our left indicator would be oh wait we can't okay yeah there's no point in the left indicator right now because we have to do the chunk updating so if oh we have to create a variable for player yeah so uh, private. we don't even need to create it here let's just say of our player equals game object dot find oh equals game object dot find with tag player so if player dot transform dot position dot x is less than left indicator dot transform dot position dot x or left indicator dot x actually because it's a vector two uh, then something will happen and of course if player dot transform dot position dot x is greater than right indicator dot x something else will happen okay so in here I'm gonna write left indicator plus equals or minus equals chunk width oh and this has got to change from this to chunk width and this got to change from this to chunk width that way we can freely change the size of our chunk width and the left indicator and right indicator and chunk spawning will all still work left indicator minus equals chunk width right indicator minus equals chunk width instantiate chunk uh, let's see actually let's instantiate the chunk first so let's cut this here instantiate chunk at left in left no hmm yeah left indicator dot left indicator minus vector 2 uh, s 16 or chunk width let's try 6 no chunk width plus chunk width divided by 2 and then 0 of course And then we can go quaternion dot identity. Then this moves down. Okay, let's see how this looks here. Oh, minus cannot be used with what I do wrong. Left indicator dot x dot x. There we go. Okay, so let's create a player here. Create the uh, create empty zero 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 and we'll create a temporary script here create an add whatever and they'll basically just quickly say just to be quick if input put dot get key down key code dot a uh, game object times time dot delta time we're not going to keep the script so don't bother copying this don't bother copying this um, gosh dot x I keep forgetting that okay so now if we hit play here null reference exception at 34 hmm 
That's right, we don't have a variable for the player because I forgot to tag the player. This is our player, tag him as player, now if we play. We don't get any more errors, do we? Wait, hold on. Yeah, no errors. So now the player should move. Does he, why doesn't he move when I press A? Can he not move? What's going on? Did I do this properly? Oh. Get key. My bad. Sorry. And it's still not doing anything. Move your freaking player. There you go. Now he's moving. Oh, he's not moving in this. I'm such an idiot. Okay, you know what? Now he's moving. Okay. Where is our... Our thing is, so let's select these chunks. So as soon as we pass, I think, here or something, it will spawn another chunk. So let's see, look over here when it spawns the other chunk. There you go. It spawned another chunk. So now let's make sure that these chunks, this one, whoa. Okay, so we have our perfectly tiled chunks are these perfectly tiled ends right there the other one starts right there yep they are perfectly tiled so that is actually really good I had a bit of doubt in that one right there so now we can just kinda copy the same line of code here except now we'll switch around the operator so this one will be plus equals this one will be plus equals this one will be plus Oh, uh, and this will be right indicator, not left indicator. Okay, and I'm going to modify this so that he can move both left and right. So if, actually, I'll just copy this. Okay. Now let's take a look at this. My bad. Now let's take a look at this. Okay. So play. Here we've got our three chunks. Let's move all the way to the left or right first. Let's see if the new chunk spawns in. Then we'll move all the way to the left. So will this show? Can we get anything that will show? No. Okay, because they're not textured at all. So let's check out our game object here. Oops. Move all the way to about 16 here. There you go. Created a new chunk. Ooh, this one is a bit awkward. Hmm. So we do need to actually modify this. Chunk width minus chunk width divided by 2. This should work. Let's continue down to about 16 here. Bam, 16 new chunk is spawned bam 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 and the new chunk tiles perfectly yes okay now let's move our player on down to the other end and see if the other chunk we create is fine as well oh oh that is a problem we don't actually want our left to move when our right is passed because then the chunk that's already there will be overlapped with another chunk so we don't actually want that we'll have a different way of uh, modifying things so actually just remove the right part from the left side and remove the left part from the right side and we should be fine now so I don't really want to test it again let's just make our game object go freaking lightning speed let's say about 15 so five times what it currently does and let's test this out and see how this works so it's just gonna create legions of chunks here my frame rate is staying steady because of vsync it's only here it should be rocketing right now no extra draw calls are being called nothing is really changing 
this is uh, naturally just wobbling around it's not doing much here and there you have it we have tons of chunks all in a perfect line so you might be wondering if the player moves all the way down here won't his game start lagging when we actually have stuff being rendered here and yes it will that's why I'm going to create a system so that uh, when the player is when when the camera can't see the block the block is invisible and that will help us run the game better so thank you for watching of course uh, please subscribe to Boris's channel please subscribe to my channel as well Mr. Underscore Fujito capital M capital F uh, follow me on Twitter M underscore Lasan for updates and also you can ask me questions about coding and stuff there Anyways, uh, the next episode we will do some <coughs> texturing. Probably, we'll get the uh, we'll get the design, or at least we'll get a color there, so you can see where the chunks are. <coughs> and then we can throw in a player to walk around and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This time I'm starting with the priorities, which is obviously infinite worlds. Because that's what you guys probably came here for. I don't know, I might be wrong, but... Uh, yeah.